Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. It's very exciting today because I've got the new, sorry, I'm so excited I can't even talk. I've got the new Rosa Gallery uh, colors that have just come out like a month or so ago. Because those 10 colors wouldn't have gotten me the Arte Miranda free shipping. So I bought a few other things. I've got a Roman Schmal paint here. I've got the my Magello Cobalt Black, which I'm quite excited about. I've got a few Royal Talents paints here, um, Rembrandt paints, sorry. And I've got a few more Rosa tube paints, but they are just replacements for paints that I already have. So that's nothing new, nothing you wouldn't have seen before if you've been around for a while. And I will swatch out all these other things soon as well, but not today. Maybe if I have enough time, I might add these two because I really want to try these two as well. But I really, really, really want to swatch the new Rosa paints. So that's what I'm going to do today. And then... I might do a proper little haul thing later, or maybe I'll just swatch the other colors, the new colors. I'm not going to swatch the Rosa replacements because, as I said, they're only those are only colors that are already in my existing Rosa palette. And because with these new colors coming out, I will probably have to do some rejigging for my paint um, um, palette anyway. So we might have a look at that later. But yes, I really, really, really want to swatch these because I'm really excited about them. So hang on, let me put them back where they belong and look i've used Lindsay's stencils to make little ovals for myself so i stay within limited space as well so so on what i'm also going to do i've actually got two jars here and i hope i'm not going to get myself confused i've got some clean water because i want to wet the bottom part of my swatch here with clean water and then I'm going to come in and swatch them. And then first we have the mask tone up there and then we can see how well they dispo uh, disperse. So and the first one is Azo Yellow, PY151. So that's Benzimidazole on Yellow, which is, I think, a good addition to the Rosa catalog, whatever you want to call it because some of their more like yellow traditional light or um, cool yellows they're all cadmiums and so they finally added one that is not a cadmium that didn't actually go particularly fast but it's a nice benzimidazolone yellow i guess So then the next one is Golden Ochre, which is PY42. And again, I'm just going to peel this off. So this one I'm also really excited about because the current yellow ochre is a mixture, I think, of... I think it's a mixture of PY42 and PY43, to be honest. But... The Rosa Yellow Ochre, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, but I'm not the biggest fan. So I might actually see if this one might replace my Yellow Ochre. Or, I mean, in terms of hue, it's fairly similar to the Raw Sienna, I think. So I will... Sorry, I got distracted there. I will have to um, look at my Rosa palette and see if I need to adjust it a little bit, maybe with these new arrivals. I think that's not supposed to be granulating. It doesn't have a G on the side, so. Then is cadmium orange medium, which is a PY35, which I thought was quite surprising. It's not a PO20, which is which is the cadmium orange pigment. So uh, it says everywhere it's PY35. See, I knew I would forget sooner or later and only three swatches and I nearly forgot. And I will be honest, I'm not sure how much use this is actually gonna get because I 
if I use orange, I like it to be more transparent than a cadmium orange would be, but just for completion's sake, I got it. And also, I mean, I'm also, I'm also trying, always trying to find uses for all the paints I have. So I will find a use for this somehow, but I'm pretty sure this is not going to go in my existing Rosa palette at the moment. And this is Cadmium Red Deep. So that's another addition to their Cadmium Reds. They have Cadmium Red Light and Cadmium Red Medium already. And the Cadmium Red Light is a mixture of PO20 and PR108, I think. And the Cadmium Red Medium is one that I have in my palette at the moment. And that's a PR108. And this is also PR108. And I'm hoping we get some granulation out of this. It says it's got a G on the side. So it says there will be granulated granulation so hopefully we'll see that i mean it's a beautiful red and it is it is different from the my other cadmium red it's much deeper that's lovely actually this is going to be lovely for mixing with ultramarine blue or indenturing blue to make really dark dark blues for night skies And yeah, let's add plenty of water. I think six out of the new 10 paints are supposedly granulating. And eight out of the paints are single pigments. So that's also very exciting. I really think those are great additions to Rosa's paints. Then this one I'm also really excited about. That's Pyro Red PR254. And that, that is probably the one one color that was most missing because all the other warmer reds that were in the, at least all the warmer reds that I have at the moment, the single pigment ones, are cadmiums. I mean, there's the flame red, even though this is quite, this is quite deep, but it's a lovely color. Look at that. Oh, and I forgot my water. Dear me. That's important because I want to see how much they flow. So far, they are not as flowy as some of the, the older Rosa paints that I have. Well, let's add some more water to that. Well, that is going quite a bit though. And that's a beautiful red. Even though in, in you it is much closer to their matter red, maybe. But it's beautiful. Look at that. I have to find a way to get that into my palette, I think, because fantastic. So yeah, I was I was really happy when I saw that they have a PR2 of um, 254 in their new colors. Because that, that was really one that was missing and and now it's here and it's beautiful. Look, I think I can see a little bit of granulation there. That's promising. So the next three, no, the next five actually, the next three are single pigments, but all the um, remaining ones, they're all granulating. So this is cobalt green medium. I think it's PG, yeah, PG26. And I mean with, hang on, water first. With all of these new colors coming out, I really have to look at my my Rosa palette and also my recommended granulating paints. And we'll have to update them all. But it's really exciting. I think it's great that they keep that they keep adding paints to their selection because I really think Rosa paints are fantastic and they're so affordable. Like I bought these on Arte Miranda and they were something like two euro 30 per full pan. And I mean, I've said this before, their full pans are slightly smaller than other full pans are, but it's like 0.5 milliliters less than 
what you usually get. Those are 2.5 milliliters and usually they're three milliliters, I think. So let's add some water to that so we can see the granulation. But look at that, that's also a beautiful, beautiful view. I will have to find a place for this one as well. So I, I can't actually tell you which one I was most excited about, but the Ultramarine Spectral is certainly going to be up there. Don't forget the water. Because there's nothing wrong with, yes, look at that, uh, with the current ultramarine that's in, in the, that's in my palette. But I was hoping this was going to be a bit more, a bit warmer even, a bit more leaning in the direction of French ultramarine and also a bit more granulating because the current ultramarine that they have is... It's more like an ultramarine light, I would say. Yeah, but this is lovely. Mm. I hope this granulates a lot. Because if it does, I might just swap this in for the, the my current ultramarine and use this instead. Then this is Indanthrene Gray PB60. And from the swatches I've seen, this looks absolutely amazing as well. It's a bit like an indigo, maybe. It can be in a, a replacement for, for the indigo. And there's nothing wrong with the rosa indigo, but it's also not my favorite, to be honest. And I think this might be a good replacement. And I have the Indantrine Blow in my palette as well. And it's actually one that I've used quite a bit recently. And it's a lovely, that's a lovely blue. And this, oh, I hope we see plenty of granulation there because then it's absolutely going to be absolutely perfection. But, oh. but look at this, look at the U. It's fantastic, beautiful. So a good thing I remember that I need to push this up a little bit. Hang on. Let's make sure it stays there. This is Azure, Azure Blue. It's a mixture of PG26, so this green, PB15, column 3, and PBK7. And I think, Rosa, if you're watching, the one thing that I really would like is um, a single pigment PBK7, because they've been using that in their other granulating paints as well, the ones that came out about a year ago. And I would really have liked to have that PBK7. So if you could make that available, I would be very much obliged to you and it would make me very happy. But yes, quite excited about this one because it looked, this looked lovely and swatches as well because it's like a dark ocean blue. Sure, there's plenty of water in here, and I think I need to go in with a bit more mass tone there. Oh, yes, look at that. That gets really dark as well, so. And I mean, strictly speaking, this is something that I could mix myself, especially that I have now that I have that PG26 there, and I have their Phalo Blue, obviously. bit too much water there but still I want to see how it granulates and oh look at that that's lovely and then the last one is carbon red which is a mixture of PB36 PR254 and PBK7 so that's um, cerulean blue and the pyrrol red and again ivory black that is not available as a single pigment from Rosso, but I really, really would like that. So there, I made sure I got plenty in mass tone here. And then we can see oh, this is also, this is like a dark carpet mortem. 
but it's different from, from, from the existing carpet mortar. All right, we need to let these dry a little bit and then I will bring, I don't know if I can zoom you out anymore. I don't really think I can. I think I'll just bring the swatches up to the camera so you can take a closer look. But yeah, so far I'm very, very happy. Those are lovely. Also giving me a bit of a headache because I need to reject my palette now, I think. But it's a good problem to have. Right, I'll be back in a second. So here they are all dry and as you can see I have swatched some of my existing rosa paints, the ones that are in my palette, just for comparison reasons. So this is cadmium lemon up here, so that's PY35 and it is, it is cooler than the Azo yellow, which is expected, but the, the Oriolan is a bit warmer and it's just, or I think the PY150 is just, it's a different yellow. So. I will have to have a serious sit down with myself and figure out if I need these three or if I maybe, I don't really use the cadmium lemon very much. So I need to think about, maybe I can take this out, but um, I wasn't going to talk about my um, palette woes. There will be a separate video, I guess. But I compared the golden um, ochre to the existing yellow ochre and the raw sienna and I guess it's a bit in the middle of both of these so I have to uh, play around and see and maybe even think about if the golden ochre could replace both of these I don't know yet so that would be that would, would be quite something I really like the raw sienna I've really painted with it quite a lot, a lot recently so th that requires experimentation and I'm not quite sure yet how I'm going to do all of these experiments but I may well do them on camera and do let me know if you want to see how I figure out my palettes because I can definitely do it on camera if you want to and the cadmium, cadmium orange medium this is the flame red which is PO73 and this is a bit warmer a bit redder even than this one and I'll have to again I'll have to see but I'm leaning towards the flame red actually I'm not sure I'm going to put the um, cadmium orange in my palette because I don't really use the orange that much anyway and this is the cadmium red medium that's currently in my palette and that's the cadmium red deep and I'm thinking this will probably replace this but I'm again not entirely sure yet it needs needs some playing around with then here's the ultramarine and this is the ultramarine spectral and I'm pretty sure I'm just going to swap swap these out because the current currently I could show you here here's the ultramarine and this is the cobalt blue and they are not a million miles away from each other so by mixing by swapping these two so putting this in taking this out and then if i mix this one and this one i get something that would be closer maybe to this here or if i mix it with any of my other blues also i've got the endantrian blue which is a um, a warmish blue and it's it's a bit darker but still i think I'm pretty sure I'm going to take the ultramarine out and going to put the ultramarine spectral into my palette. Then this is this is the paint's gray and I was comparing these two and as you can see this is obviously much bluer leaning but I think because I don't use the paint's gray as much as I thought I would I think this was and the paint's gray was um, a late late edition anyway and I don't use it as much as I thought I would and I think I can probably again play around a bit more and see if I can use this to make something that comes closer to this and then this might go because this is gorgeous this needs to be in my palette definitely so now let me hold up the swatches a bit closer to the camera so you can have a better look and let's do it in a way that you can actually see it so this is the first row I am really really happy with the addition of all of these so I'm really glad that Rosa came out with these Look at the granulation and, and the cobalt uh, green that is really really nice and you can see the granulation in these in these two as well and then the mixes down here they granulate quite a bit i think they're more granulating even than most of the other 
granulating colors they came out with a year ago so there's another comparison that i maybe need to make and i didn't look at the cadmium red deep but you can see that has a bit of granulation as well doesn't show doesn't show as well in, in this swatch but i think it will granulate more on better paper as well so there's definitely definitely puts me in a bit, bit of a pickle because i need to rejig my rosa palette again and it was i think it was less than a year ago that i did all of this i put all of this together because it, the palette initially was the rosa 21 classic palette but i had an entire row empty but I'd bought, I think, 13 more open stock um, pans, and then I got a couple more, so I had 15 and I had to figure it all out. And now I guess I have to go and do it again. But after a year of painting with the palette, so I've got at least some idea of things that I can take out and that I might not necessarily need. But yes, there will be, there will probably be quite a bit of palette figuring out going on. Do let me know if you're interested. So thank you very much for joining me today. Please give the video a like and consider subscribing to my channel if you enjoy watching people talk about their paints and palettes and all of that stuff. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye now. Bye. What I want to show you quickly is Rosa do something that I wish everybody would do. They have a really clever way of putting the information on their pans because you've got this little sticker on top here with the name and the number. And then on the sides here is the pigment information, the light fastness, the transparency. And again, on the other side is the, um, the internal ROSA number and the name again. And these little flaps here, they're all perforated, so you can remove them really easily. And what I usually do, I leave the ones with the name and the information on the sides, so my pants are labeled. And then I just... put up this bit and because they're perforated you can tear them but what I usually do and what I've done with all these other ones already is I come in with a knife you can either take a craft knife or exacto knife or I've got my Swiss army knife here and because they're already perforated the knife doesn't have to even have to be very sharp it just goes through there very easily and then you can just lift this off and if you're putting putting them in a in a tin, you can take the thing off completely because I'm not sure where they're gonna go yet. I'm leaving it on so I can close it again. But yes, I wish everybody would wrap their pants like that. That is the most clever way, I think. Also because then you already have all the information on there and you don't need to do it yourself.